Welcome to Privacy Ninja's weekly podcast series. I'm Andy from Privacy Ninja, and we help companies and business on privacy matters. With us today, we have Dexter from NTHack. Okay, NTHack specializes in vulnerability assessments and penetration testing, okay, whereby they find bugs and uh, vulnerabilities for businesses. So they identify these bugs before the bad guys can come in. And with us yeah. today, our guest host will be uh, Yang Chong. Yang Chong's from YC Videos. So Yen Chong, hi. Can you give us a quick introduction about yourself and what you do? Hey, hey, thanks. And uh, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for inviting me for your podcast. Uh, and I'm very really thankful for that. Uh, basically, what I do is I'm a media marketing specialist that I help SMEs, organizations, and uh, basically any entrepreneurs to advise and execute their branding and their social media strategy. La. So, uh, but the core medium that I use to help them is video. So I specialize, uh, I, I specialize in video marketing strategies to solve their pain points and of course hitting their marketing and business goals. Yeah, so that's overall what I do for, yeah, that's hey, all. Thank you, Yen Chong. That's very interesting. In these critical times, especially during this COVID period, I think, you know, um, having uh, engaging videos will help to boost or get a brand awareness out there for businesses. So today, some of the topics we're going to cover will be work from home tips, uh, important skills to learn during this COVID-19 period, and also about uh, personal data protection. So let's start on, on the first one, okay, working from home tips. Do you have any work from home tips for the audience? Uh, start with me or? Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, this one I know two weeks ago. Because, you know, everybody's sharing about tips and stuff. So I just happened to kind of like try a few. La, and I think of three that is very helpful for me. First, when I come, uh, when I start my work on the morning, right, I just straight away, like, turn on music from Spotify. But not any, like, random music. Uh, I have this, like, focus track. So I think I think you type in Spotify, you just go with focus, right? You can actually find, like, a set of tracks that is, like, non, uh, non-verbal. non It's just music, pure background music. Uh, it's not very loud, so you can literally play at the back and you can stay focused. Just put on your headset, then you're in a zone. Then another thing that I tried to do and it helped uh, was I set timer. So uh, I will I will set like maybe an hour and a half, then fully focus on that. Then once the timer strike, right, then I will kind of like maybe rest for like 10 minutes. So everything is being timed and proper. <clears throat> and that helped me reach my objective for the day quite efficiently then the last one i really want to thank is uh, trello i didn't know trello exists uh, until until last month then like uh, because i've been using google calendar but it's so messy then yes. suddenly someone then then i happened to see like, one of my friend then he was like hey, uh because they because uh, we were doing a group project thing so he said hey, uh I will Trello you over. Then I was like, what the hell is Trello me over? Is it some sort of like lingo that I don't understand? Sure. Then he was like, oh no, it's an app. Very, very good. Then I was like, oh, is it? Then I try out. Uh, wow, then, then I got addicted. Then end up, I set up my own Trello cards uh, for myself that makes the my my creation process, right? Uh, so much smoother you know, from pre-production and editing. Then I know exactly what is happening during which period. Then that, that helped me. Uh. So so these three tips uh, helped me a lot for this uh, during this COVID season. How about you guys? Yeah, so actually, we have been using Trello for a very long time, for our, even for our development and software projects. So today, uh, we actually even have one client where she was complaining like she needed to train all her employees from scratch. During this period, she needed, yeah, yeah. she needed to onboard <laughs> new, new um, project managers and developers, but then she needed to teach them how her software infrastructure and teach how it works to them. But then, so I told her, why don't you just use Trello and then Put all the instructions step by step and they just follow column by column and then you don't need to teach them at all or the, yourself in a zoom call wasting your time <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah the time save right i think it's yes. the time save la. like if if you can stay focused with using apps right then i think you, you really can shorten a lot of things that you're doing yeah yeah trello is an excellent uh, productive tool and furthermore it's free also the free version itself is really very good and you can do so much with it. You can exactly track and set it to different columns, shift task cards around, set your deadline, set alarms. Yeah, so it's very good. But thank you, Yen Chong. The three points you mentioned are all productivity based and especially during this time, you know, when all of us are working from home, okay, um, 
then we may tend to have distractions. Maybe our pet, maybe the, someone owns the TV, you know, uh, the bed is just beside us. We may be inclined to take a nap. So all this that I just mentioned, having focused music, okay, using uh, productivity tools like, like Trello. So all this would help us to better focus and make full use of our time. Instead of while being at the office, then you'll be a different feel. So I, I really do agree. And actually some of it, actually what you mentioned, I'll already be trying to use some of it myself as well. So so thank you for that. <laughs> So yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so for those who, who don't know what Trello is, we will be putting it in the link below in the description. Yeah. So you all can you can just go there and then just sign up an account and then try try it out. Yeah. yeah. Anyone knows how long Trello has been like exists already now? Because I feel like I've been left out. Definitely more than long. definitely <laughs> more than ten almost ten years at least. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's many years already in <laughs> Trello. I and and also, man. yeah, Trello is so popular that uh, unless I'm mistaken, recently I saw while well, logging to Trello, there was a prompt, a notification that came out and they said they are now owned by Artisan. So another company is like buying them over or yeah. taking over. Yeah. So that's the amount of take up rate that people are using. So there's a lot, actually there's a lot of templates online where you can just download and then import it into your account. So there's like video production planning, business planning, yeah, even like project planning, there's endless amount of planning, even like magazine production planning also, it, they have all templates for that. Yeah, Actually, it's true. Eh? I think because <laughs> it's so good, right? Because I'm doing also video marketing, like, like a little academy, right? I really share with everyone that I, I feel that could benefit. And I now add this as part of my video marketing like process. So if anyone wants to like kind of like hop on and like want to learn, right? The first thing I introduce is the Trello. It's not even the process itself. So just introduce that platform so that they could start slotting their content ideas. Yeah. 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 Uh, we also do uh, data protection um, consultancy, right? So you know the DPTM, Data Protection Trust Marks, yeah, where companies can be ever more compliant to the PDPA and can go for certification to show that they are so compliant and build more trust with their customers. So this is an intensive uh, process, but there's a lot of different phases involved. So one of the tools that we also actually uh, share with our clients is also actually Trello. But after using, they will say, hey, actually this is I can use this Trello tool for a lot of my other internal operations also, not just to track the project management of uh, the DPTM. So yeah, there's so many use cases for, for Trello. Mm -hmm. true, true, true. Okay, uh, Dexter, maybe you can share also some uh, um, Google Chrome tips and, and, and such for our listeners today. Yeah, so today we will talk about two things uh, for the work from home tips where I think a lot of us are using Google Chrome and even using Zoom. So we'll be telling you how to secure your Google Chrome as well as how to fix your Zoom issues to make it secure. Yeah. So let's start with Google Chrome. So Google Chrome released recently Google Chrome 83. Not sure if some of you do not have the auto update enabled, please make sure it's updated and then restart your Google Chrome. And the new security and privacy settings are not enabled by default. So you might want to refer to the link in our show notes and then there's a step-by-step -step guide on how you should enable each of the points that I'm going to talk about. So there's this first point would be you can block third-party cookies in incognito mode now. So in incognito mode, a lot of people thought, oh, that was private browsing, but actually it's not. That it just doesn't save your history. But actually third-party cookies are still tracking you on like let's say you log in your social media your facebook or google account on uh incognito mode they are still tracking all whatever you're doing in your incognito mode yeah so yeah, yeah maybe i can ask you guys what what were your impressions about incognito mode previously <laughs> <laughs> did you think mm. that uh nobody is able to to see what you're doing in incognito mode <laughs> I believe a lot of people, like what you correctly said, yeah. that they would think incognito mode means private browsing means they are safe from praying eyes. No cookies are tracking them. You know, their browsing history is not saved. Uh, but of course, if you think about it logically or if you're a little bit more tech savvy, you would then know that track uh, cookies or, you know, uh, monitoring or tracking analytics still have to work even if you are using uh, uh, private mode, right? For the website to work properly. So to an extent only, what I would assume last time is, yes, private browsing, mm or incognito mode is slightly more safer, it's better than nothing. And if I don't want the session to be tracked, for example, I would rather use uh, incognito mode 
but I do know that they're still uh, tracking yeah. and whenever you log in, they're still yeah watching you. Yeah, so after Andy, after Andy met me, I told him like the incognito mode is is bullshit. All it does is in layman <laughs> terms, in layman terms, it just uh, if your girlfriend is checking your history, it, it just prevents her from checking your history. <laughs> if you if you surf on <laughs> yesterday, you you serve it in incognito mode, and then she won't be able to find out. Yeah, that's the only use. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything against hackers at all. Yeah. So yeah. does it mean that we can ju- we we don't really care whether it's in connect or in future we just use a normal browser? It will still, it will mm, still yeah. like this for the for the same purpose. Yeah. So in our previous episode, we 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 actually advise the best way to do it is to separate, uh, three different browsers for three different usage. One is your daily browsing. One is for your banking and e-commerce stuff. Then one is for your work related stuff. So don't don't surf. Your personal browser should not be what you use to do for work at all as well. Segregate all this. Yeah. That is the wow. safest. Yeah. Yeah. I think initially I also thought like Incognito have some sort of like protection. But after you guys have been sharing with me, I think right before the podcast, so you guys mm. just simply use the email address. You guys already <laughs> shocked me with all the details already. So that yeah. that's quite a scary uh, thing that we're living in a digital world, but a lot of people are not savvy enough to like protect it. Yes, correct. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Now there's a uh, there's new update called Enhanced Safe Browsing Mode. So enhanced safe browsing mode is Google will actually check mali- for malicious sites against a blacklist. And previously, they were, it was only updated every 30 minutes. So there's still a lot of phishing websites that are still going through Google Chrome that can bypass its 30 minutes check of uh, blacklist. So the phishing sites now, what they did in this new update is, is updated in real time. So it's much more secure now. And... But this function is not uh, enabled by default. So you, you, you have to refer to the link below and then see exactly how to enable this safe browsing mode. Yeah, And also this there's this uh, feature where it will actually check against uh, data breaches, check your passwords against data breaches. So you must enable that as well and it will help a lot. Like just now we, we actually showed you that your email was in Canvas data breach. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't even oh, know. Didn't know. Yeah. One year or more. It's yeah. not even like a few months. Actually, because yeah. I've been more heavily used, like I've been heavily using Canva for like only recently to do yeah. the thumbnails and stuff. But I didn't know it's in breach for more than a year. It was quite scary to know. <laughs> yeah. So it, it happened in May 2019. So for all those who are using Canva and didn't change your password since May 2019, please make sure you guys change it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oops, we have finished about Google Chrome. Let's talk about Zoom yeah. then. So many people I know are using Zoom nowadays, <laughs> right? It's a convenient option and, yeah. and the free version is really good to use. Okay. So let's talk about Zoom. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give 10 tips on how you can fix your Zoom issues if I think a lot of people are die die want to use Zoom, especially your customers or even your workplace are using, you're, they already subscribed and paid for a premium Zoom account. So they are not going to let you use any other platforms. So first tip would be actually to password protect your meetings. That's like the most important. So previously, a lot of people did not even bother to put passwords. So a lot of people were like hackers were brute forcing the room names and then they could just join your your session without because your, your session has no password. So there's a lot of automated tools. They just spray and pray. They can spray thousands and thousands of rooms and auto go inside. And then they can just disrupt your session. Yeah. Yep. So, Speaking of that, there was hmm. a, a news uh, release recently that uh, there was a school session. I think uh, young kids, primary school kids, they were having an online session, right? Uh, due to yeah. COVID. Uh, and then there was two perpetrators who came in and then, you know, they they flashed th- themselves to the kids and disrupted the lesson. It was a horrible experience. Yeah. So that's yeah. why without password protecting, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, was... kena already, cause uh, cause my partner is a, is a also a tutor, ma. Then yeah. uh, also got someone happen to go in, then shout some uh profanity or something, then shout then leave. So uh, <laughs> quite quite starting to be quite common. So it was a Singaporean accent or American accent or what? No idea, like, I think it's Angmoa. I think. It's Angmoa. <laughs> 
Okay, okay. so you experienced it firsthand. <laughs> wow, that, that's something. Mm. Yeah. Initially, we thought I was one of the students. So we mm. like verify, hey, uh, do you all like get someone to, to shout something? Lah? But they all they say that they didn't. So I'm pretty sure that the voice was different from the students. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's how easily we have a password in place. This will protect the session from any uh, external disruptions. Yeah. So another point number two would definitely to authenticate. Only accept authenticated users. So people we have uh, with accounts, no guest accounts allowed for your Zoom session. There will be there was another extra layer. So there's also this function called join before host. Make sure that is disabled. So nobody can join the session before the host, so that the host is there, she's able to make sure there's no funny people joining at all. Yeah. Because and he can manually, it, yeah. man, once he comes in first, no one can come in before him, he can yeah. manually approve, right, and authenticate users. Yes, correct. He makes sure that uh, there's this, uh, there's another function called waiting rooms. Uh. Waiting rooms is where he, he must one by one authenticate these people from coming in. Yeah. Mm. And also, uh, there's this thing called lock down your meeting. So lock down your meeting means once your session starts, maybe let's say your your meeting or your home-based learning has started, please enable this feature so that nobody, even with the password, they somehow manage to get it, they cannot join anymore. Uh, you should you should enable that. That's like the extra layer of security. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is also a very good point because if you're focused on, on teaching, right, or screen sharing, you may not be able to look uh, at whoever who else is joining in new and there may be too many participants for you to keep track so then someone who is not supposed to be inside the session may just come in without you noticing yeah so then there's one more which is what exactly happened during this uh the this ministry of education why they ban it is the turn off participant screen sharing so you don't allow people who to showcase their screen and then show porn websites this is exactly mm -hmm. what happened to the schools home-based learning. Some hacker went in and started showing porn hub stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I believe right. they have a term for it. It's called a Zoom bomber, right? Yeah, Zoom bombing. <laughs> is basically, they, see, basically, they just go, they have the script to automatically just go into random rooms and then disrupt the session. Yeah. Yeah. This is very bad. This be like giving the young kids uh, advanced, uh, uh, you know, uh, sex education even before they're supposed <laughs> to learn. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my oh my yeah and also use randomly generated ID so don't share your personal ID publicly so recently I actually shared with Andy I show look at this guy he's showing his session ID everything publicly we together with the password yeah he was promoting all over Facebook <laughs> oh dear yeah. yeah and and it doesn't even though he, Andy told me it's a public thing it's, anybody can join I say but yeah but the guy can just definitely go in and then disrupt his other sessions when he next time he have a private session and you use back the same ID they will definitely be taking note of his ID yeah yeah of course if he's if he's <clears throat> savvy enough to set in place uh, like what we already discussed the four or five points you know create a waiting room manually approve set a different password per, per session and of course this can be avoided uh, and he also defeats the purpose he go and publicly post on his social media this is my room this is the password yeah. That defeats the purpose of having a password in the yeah. first place. That, that's exactly what I told Andy. I say he's useless. What's the point of putting a password? And worse, if he's gonna use back the same password, I think there's in Singapore everybody is guilty, lah. At least eighty percent of the people are definitely using the same passwords. They are guilty of using same passwords for multiple accounts for sure. Yeah, for at least more yeah. than one, uh. Because yeah. there's so many social media accounts now, so many work staff, personal staff accounts, yes. this and that, emails. Yeah, it's hard to keep track. So if you don't people. use a password manager, yeah, people will be using the same across summer. We highly, highly recommend, Piracy Ninja highly recommends you guys to use password manager. That is really the best tip ever. Please use it and make sure you auto-generate the super strong password. If not, there, there's a lot of scripts out there with auto-generated passwords that they can just test and brute force your account. Yeah. Oh, does does yeah. the anyway? But by, by the way, does the you know uh, every time I do like because I'm using a Mac, then they would mm. like suggest a generated password. Does, yes, use that. Is it you, is it good? Is yes. it like super good? Yes, okay. use that and then uh, use the password manager. There's so many free ones out there. There's one pass. There's last pass. Yeah, then there's the also key pass. If I'm not wrong, yeah. All these are 
are good to use. It's better than using one that you can remember on your own. You remember your own means the hacker can crack it in in a few hours for sure. Yes. Yeah, it's always uh, you have to strike a balance between you know uh, ease of access against security. Right? Mm. You don't want to to have any of your accounts compromised. But at the same time, you want to quickly log into whatever account you need to and then access and do your work. So there's always this um, hassle involved. The more secure it is, the little bit more hassle or more fun it is for you to, to log in. But that's critically needed at this time because all businesses are going digital. Everyone has so many online accounts. If you don't practice, you know, a safe uh, security or good cyber hygiene uh, practices like complex passwords, then in the long run, you're going to get some of your accounts compromised. It's going to cause a bigger problem for you. Okay, so I still have three more tips. So the next one will be avoid file sharing. Don't let your participants send files to each other unless really, really you trust these people in your room. As, as Yeah, so... Why avoid file sharing? Maybe they can share malicious files to each other. Even like now malicious files can be in form of images, PDF files, Word document, Excel files. Yeah. So please don't anyhow allow file sharing when it's not necessary in your was, Zoom session. Yeah. yeah. There was a news that uh, Zoom temporarily disabled their, their file sharing function, right? I don't know if it's already re-enabled. Mm, I think they still allow it <laughs> in yeah. the premium version. Yeah. I read it. They, they quoted a potential security vulnerability. Then they paused it. They disabled the file sharing feature for a while. But there's so many that you can use trusted services like uh, Dropbox or, or Google Drive. Yeah, make sure, of course, when you share the link that they only have viewing access and or you can, the best way will be to manually input their email address so only they, when logging to their email address, can access the content that you want to share. Not make it a free link and just post, uh, post it out there. Yeah. Okay, so the last one will be check for updates. Always check for updates and always update your softwares. It doesn't only apply to Zoom, it applies to every single software on your computer. Especially now Zoom is going through a hard time and a lot of revamp on their cybersecurity issues. They are definitely going to keep releasing updates every two weeks or even every week. Yeah, yeah. Right. so I teach uh, cybersecurity causes, I teach data protection, and one of the key things that I always preach is updates, okay, which is we are just talking about just nice right now. So updates, when you see your operating system has a uh, update, you see any of your software has an update, okay, not only talking about antivirus, anti-malware, okay, protection software, any application, any software you use, or even your browser. When the uh, update appears, what it means is most probably there's a critical vulnerability or a zero day that's been detected. Okay, and this software company is pushing this update, pushing this notification to you to tell you, please go and update this as soon as you can. So our advice is always, whenever you see any prompt or, you know, the small rectangle at the corner right hand <coughs> side of the screen appears, that there's a new update, as soon as possible, whenever convenient, during your lunch break or even on the spot, okay, go and make sure the update is done. Because you don't, want, you don't know when your endpoint can be compromised already. And the reason yeah. why they're pushing this to you is because it's important, something has been found, it's uh, a vulnerability, they won't tell you, oh, we have a major vulnerability, please go and fix. It will look bad on the brand's name, right? So they always say, critical update, please update. So it's very, very important whenever you receive a prompt or an update, okay, please go and do it. Yeah. So for business owners, it's not only your computers that you need to worry about and also your fo your phones, your employees' phones. Yeah. A lot of your phones are actually holding a lot of company data or even worse, personal data. Yeah. So <laughs> please make sure everything is updated and... Also, your website, if you're using things like WordPress, WordPress also is getting heavily attacked every month or even every day. So yeah. there are definitely new updates that you need to update. Your team, your plugins, all must be updated. If not, you're either going to get defaced or some data leak is going to happen to you. Uh -huh. Yeah, there are millions and millions of uh, <coughs> businesses worldwide using WordPress because it's so easy to use the WordPress to you know add in plugins and very easy to create beautiful designs. But again, WordPress is based on plugins, and you, if you don't update any plugin, like Dexter mentioned, any of your plugin or even the core WordPress it update itself, or even your PHP, uh, you know, version, then constantly, almost so uh, so often that there will be a vulnerability found. Yeah, so it's very very important to update. Yeah. Okay, we've covered Zoom. So uh, Dexter, we like to share other than Zoom, what are, what are alternatives? Okay, do our listeners uh, have yeah. that they can use? Okay, so, I mean, there's one more called Google Meet. They have recently made it free. 
there's up to now they give free up to hundred concurrent users in a in a call session, a conference wow. call session. Yeah. Yep. So and their servers are actually quite fast. So they you can actually use it for lessons or webinars. That's actually quite good. And they allow your users not to they don't need a Google account to actually join your session. So there's actually a big plus point. And why? Privacy, because right? yeah, so because Google is a big corporation, they sell advertisements. It's best not to have to try not to have an account with them for everything. Yeah. I mean a lot of people are already using Gmail and they are using Chrome browser. They are already tracking everything you're doing. So always try not to use everything on in one corporation. If not, they have everything about you. Yeah. So yeah, your browsing data, your cookies, all being tracked. Yeah. And yeah. Skype also. Skype also now you can create a link instantly that people can join without a Skype account. Yeah. So yeah, a, a lot of the big players out there, you know, to, to, to fight, not only I would say Zoom, but to make it easy for everyone to take up their service, to adopt their service, they make it yeah. much more easier. Yeah. So for rule of thumb is, if you already have a Google account, just use Google. And if you already have a Hotmail account, just use Skype. So that you don't need to create another new account just to join another big corporation. Yeah. Okay, I think we've yeah. covered a lot of work from home tips. Um, yeah. All this that we just mentioned uh, previously also, we will be putting these links in the uh, uh, below show this notes. video. Yeah. yeah, in the show notes. So anyone can just click on it. You can read more in detail in case you missed out anything. There will, there will also be step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure your new, your latest Google Chrome updates. You know, your your plugins and alternatives to Zoom, for example.